Welcome back to New World Next Week. I'm James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. And I'm James Evan Pilato of MediaMonarchy.com. Canada keeps testing their emergency alert system. We've got that story plus another chance at 9-11 Truth. But first, speaking of 9-11 Truth, Pentagon fails its first ever audit. We take this from Reuters. The Pentagon has failed what is being called its first ever comprehensive audit, finding U.S. Defense Department accounting discrepancies that could take years to resolve. Results of the inspection conducted by some 1,200 auditors and examining financial accounting on a wide range of spending, including weapon systems, military personnel, and property. We failed the audit, but we never expected to pass it, so said Deputy Secretary of Defense Patrick Shanahan talking to reporters, adding that the findings showed the need for greater discipline in financial matters within the pentagram. It was an audit on a $2.7 trillion organization, so the fact that we did the audit is substantial, Shanahan added. It was unclear what consequences there would be after the audit, but Shanahan said the focus would be on fixing the issues. A 1990 federal law mandated 28 years ago that the U.S. government agencies be audited, but for 28 years, the Pentagon dodged it and has not faced a comprehensive audit until this one was launched one year ago. James, as we reported actually right here on New World Next Week. That's right. And people might think we're a little late to the party with this because the uh, Pentagon failed the audit story came out a couple weeks ago. But I was really waiting for this nation story, um, which is a great encapsulation of the whole story. And uh, for so please stop what you're doing. If you're interested in the missing trillion story, go and read this story from the nation, the Pentagon massive accounting fraud exposed, which is a pretty comprehensive story, as I say, and it goes into detail about the work of Catherine Austin Fitz and Dr. Mark Skidmore on missingmoney.solary.com. It's linked in the nation article. We'll link it here in the show notes. Uh, go there. It has uh, the reports that Catherine Austin Fitz and Dr. Mark Skidmore have done on this and really getting into drilling down on the numbers as we know them, as we're allowed to see them through the window of the Office of Inspector General reports, which uh, <laughs> interestingly, as they note in the Nation report, are now starting to be redacted themselves. They are redacting their own reports about the missing money at the Pentagon. Uh, it's crazy. They show uh, the cover of the redacted uh, uh, report on the U.S. Navy and, and part of the, its budget uh, uh, analysis. It, they literally redacted part of the title, the Redacted, Redacted, Redacted Financial Statements Compilation Adjustments and Information Technology Corrective Action Plan Validation Process. I mean, it's just, it gets crazier and crazier. But this is, a, 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 the, as I say, this Nation article does a good job of encapsulating what the problem really is, because I know it's confusing. The missing trillions and this staggering number that is now being thrown around of $21 trillion of transactions that cannot be accounted for, that's insanity. That's total insanity. In individual years, you have figures like 1.2 or even $2.8 trillion missing. That's impossible. The con Congress does not give that much money to the Pentagon. How can they lose that much money? It doesn't, it doesn't even make sense. It doesn't add up. And they go into a great length about what this actually means in this article, reading from the nation. In all, at least a mind-boggling $21 trillion of Pentagon financial transactions between 1998 and 2015 could not be traced, documented, or explained, concluded Skidmore. To be clear, Skidmore, in a report co-authored with Kath Catherine Austin Fitz, do not contend that all of this $21 trillion was secret or misused funding. And indeed, the plugs, the plugs that they put into the books to cook the books to make them all add up, are found on both the positive and negative sides of the ledger, thus potentially netting each other out. But the Pentagon's bookkeeping is so obtuse Skidmore and Fitz added that it is impossible to trace the actual sources and destinations of the $21 trillion. So we don't know how much money is actually missing and we have zero insight into where it might have went. But we know that some something up to $21 trillion, something less than $21 trillion, presumably, has just been pilfered out. And this, once they go into the details of the, the, the accounting fraud, and that is the right word to use here, this is accounting fraud that they are using here. It is a deliberate system that has been set up as the black hole into which money can just disappear and no one will ever know where it went because it's just not supported and they just plug the books at the end of the year to make it all add up. It's insanity 
that this is going on and that this isn't the number one pressing political issue in the United States. $21 trillion in transactions that cannot be accounted for at the Pentagon and people are squabbling over whatever they're squabbling over today in the news. I mean, it's just, it's insanity. And uh, this report, as I say, does a good job of pointing all of that out. Well, in the Dave Lindorf article, Pentagon's massive accounting fraud exposed how U.S. military spending keeps rising even as the Pentagon flunks its audit. Dave Lindorf and Catherine Austin Fitz have done fantastic work through the years. I guess I'm only just kind of surprised that this is in the nation. We'll actually include the flashback link, James. It is almost exactly one year ago that we talked about this right here on Neural Next Week, December 14th, 2017. After trillions go missing, DOD getting audited for the first time in history. As we move to our second story this week on Neural Next Week, episode 358, if you're keeping score, we get to 9-11 truth again. And as James, you and I both often say, and we still say it in our work, and I sometimes feel like we're becoming more of lone voices still saying it in our work. If you want to end wars, if you want to fix the environment, I want to do a lot of things, 9-11 truth is your key. 9-11 was the blank check, so stopping that blank check just, yeah, fill, fill in your banking analogy there. Good news here on the 9-11 truth front. Attorney takes a first step towards prosecuting explosive destruction of World Trade Center on 9-11. The Lawyers Committee for 9-11 Inquiry, a nonprofit public interest organization, announces its receipt of a letter from the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York in response to the Lawyers Committee's April 10th, 2018 petition and July 30th, 2018 amended petition demanding that the U.S. Attorney present Present to a special grand jury extensive evidence of yet to be prosecuted federal crimes relating to the destruction of World Trade Center Towers 1, Towers 2, and of course Tower 7. The U.S. Attorney in his November 7th letter to the Lawyers Committee stated, quote, We have received and reviewed the Lawyers Committee for 9-11 inquiries, submissions April 10th and July 30th. We will comply with the provisions as they relate to your submissions. The takeaway, the sort of easier way to maybe put this, United States Attorney agrees to comply with federal law requiring submission to special grand jury of report by Lawyers Committee and 9-11 victims family members of yet to be prosecuted 9-11 related federal crimes or like Ed Asner puts it the U.S. Attorney's decision to comply with the grand jury statute is an important step towards greater transparency and accountability regarding 9-11 and we will include of course in the show notes that letter U.S. Attorney Jeffrey Berman will comply with U.S. Code 18 Section 3332 James well, I want to give a hat tip to those people in the audience who tried, tried to fulfill our request last week to provide some good news stories. And uh, I heard from a few people um, with a couple of stories uh, and, and uh, one person who said he couldn't find anything, but he really tried. <laughs> I mean, there's not a lot of good news coming out there. So this is a one that we can put in that category, although, as always, not unmitigated good news. But my hat tip goes in this case to Volitional James, Corbett Report subscriber Volitional James in the comments section of uh, recent, uh, uh, my recent interview about this Lawyers Committee and its quest for 9-11 truth, um, who put this in the comments section uh, a day or two ago, uh, and a link to the press release on the Lawyers Committee website, which states that the U.S. Attorney's letter does not spell out the steps that will be taken to comply with this uh, request, but 18 U.S.C. section 3332 is clear as to what these steps mu must be. The law states any such U.S. attorney receiving information concerning such an alleged offense from any other person shall, if requested by such other person, inform the special grand jury of such alleged offense, the identity of such other person, and such attorney's action or recommendation. And the law also states it shall be the duty of each such uh, special jury grand jury impaneled with any judicial district to inquire into if offenses against the criminal law of the United States alleged to have been committed within that district. So it's quite clear in the letter of the law what the Attorney General now must do, given that he is going to comply with this request, but, <laughs> but, dot, 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 is that what he means by comply? Uh, I I think the it's best summed up in that comment thread on uh, CorbettReport.com from Corbett Report user ManBearPig, who wrote, um, it's hard to know how to react to this. Waves of joy stifled by heavy clouds of cynicism. But the constant draining and ongoing battle is not 
to be overcome by paralyzing cynicism, not to give in to the Chomskyan temptation of who knows and who cares. So he says, uh, Man Bear Pig says, I'll lift my cup of coffee and drink to Mr. Asner's great, greater transparency. Thanks for this update. So I think that's the spirit in which we have to take this. You know, put your faith in the judicial system all you will, and, uh, you know, it might be misplaced faith. But at any rate, this is a step towards transparency. And the more important part of this, from my perspective, perhaps I'm biased being in this media environment, but the more important pers- point of this is, hey, look, guys, here's this story about this grand jury that's going to be impaneled, or they say they're going to comply, and you want to know more about it? Oh, here's all the appendices to the, the, that they had to their, their request that has all this information about 9-11. Getting that out to the public, I think, to me, is probably the bigger win here and the bigger potential possibility than waiting for the government to investigate itself. You know, I'm not holding my breath for that. But anyway, I'm not going to give into the cynicism. This is a good news story. But absolutely. We'll, we'll take 9-11 truth just, just about any way we can, we can get it this, at this point. Now, this many, 17, 17, 8, however many years later. <sighs> James, I didn't get any good news stories <laughs> submitted to me, so we'll go out with our third and final story with a, a confluence of two different stories I noted today kind of happening at the same time. And again, kind of wondering what are they preparing for and what are they preparing for behind the sort of front of preparation. Alert Ready system tested across Canada for the second time. Most Canadians heard their mobile phones televisions and radios sound off today. It's uh, November 28th as I speak to you, as the Alert Ready system underwent a second round of testing. Provincial emergency management organizations conducted simultaneous public alerting tests across Canada in a bid to make sure people receive emergency alerts and can take action to stay safe. Test alerts appeared on updated and compatible mobile devices connected to an LTE wireless network. Second test comes after Manitoba Infrastructure's Emergency Measures Organization said only 60% of wireless users got the test when they ran it the first time back in May. Did you get the message? Canada tests its emergency alert system. So this went off today, apparently, I guess all without a hitch, James. I find it kind of interesting how much Trudeau, in a lot of ways, continues to kind of echo, of course, America's next top president, though he, of course, feigns his hatred. He passed this amazing tax break bill for Canadian businesses recently, and it seems like they're running a bunch of these presidential kind of alert tests at the same time. So meanwhile, today, I see the news that Hawaii man sues the state, saying that missile alert, that false alert panic caused his near fatal heart attack, and he is suing the state for that, James. So I find it a kind of an interesting confluence of these emergency alerts, whether they're an announced drill or something kind of gone wrong. Do you have, do you still have lots of folks back in Canada that you speak with? Do you, has anybody said anything about this to you? I haven't talked to anyone about this. I will make an effort to do so and I'll, I'll let you know, but I can report from my own perspective. I think I've mentioned it before that it was a couple of years ago here in Japan during a slight tremor that we had once, suddenly my phone was squawking and beeping and what what the hell was that? And I take it out and, oh, it's an emergency alert. There's going to be an earthquake. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> you're a couple seconds late on that, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, there was an earthquake, I guess. And that was when I discovered, oh, okay, I guess they've instituted the national emergency alert system here in Japan as well. And I definitely got a full earful of that last summer when we were having that tremendous flooding here um, with the the phones were squawking every hour pretty much with new alerts about where to go in case of flooding and all of this and it was quite eerie i was out at a cafe working as i always am and i was working i think on the 9-11 documentary or something at that point and there i was at the cafe typing away and suddenly all everyone's phone in the entire cafe is squawking and beeping and blasting and you know everyone looks and oh it's the latest alert about the flooding so uh that system is definitely here in japan and running and able so i guess um i'm only surprised you guys are only just testing it now (laughs) that's right well yeah the test today in canada of course the the u.s presidential alerts happened just just last month back in october but that maybe even sort of makes me think of what we were just talking about in some ways succumbing to the cynicism in some ways the emergency alerts will become so usual again Make your 1984 analogy. We know the alerts. Okay, I follow all the stuff. And- yeah, I, I turned mine off, actually, because it was just, I don't need this every hour on the hour. <laughs> I get it. It's flooding. I get it. So. One 
extra one extra bit I'll include about Hawaii, which I think gives a little extra context. State review prompted by false missile alert, months behind schedule. So we come full circle, of course, in the incompetence of government. James, as I always like to say at the end of these episodes, I stream news, music, memes, and more Monday through Friday, 9 to 5 Pacific time at MediaMonarchy.com slash listen. I think it's a pretty good time. I wish folks would come and check it out. Awesome. I hope they do so. And uh, they can do so while they're waiting for the part three of the World War One conspiracy documentary. Thank you to all of the Corbett Report audience that has been waiting for that. You will not have to wait for very much longer. I can promise you that, but I'm not going to put a deadline on it. Anyway, stay tuned to CorbettReport.com. You will be seeing it quite soon. All right, buddy. I think that wraps up this New World Next Week, episode 358, unless you have any other important... I think that's it. Uh, Let's do it again next week. All right, buddy. Take care.